Genesis chapter 22. Genesis chapter 22. I'm going to read the first 14 verses, Lord willing. And it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham and said unto him, Abraham, and he said, Behold, here I am. And he said, Take thy son, thine only son, Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains which I will tell thee of. And Abraham rose up early in the morning and saddled his ass and took two of his young men with him, and Isaac his son, and clave the wood for a burnt offering, and rose up and went into the place which God had told him. Then on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off. And Abraham said unto his young men, Abide ye here with the ass, and I, with, and I and the lad will go yonder and worship and come again to you. And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it upon Isaac his son, and he took the fire in his hand and the knife, and they went both of them together. And Isaac and and Isaac spake unto Abraham, his father, and said, My father, he said, Here am I, my son. And he said, Behold the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? And Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. And they went both of them together. And it came to pass... To the place, and they came rather, and they came to the place where which God had told him, uh, him of. And Abraham stood. I'm sorry, I'm having trouble with my glasses tonight. Uh, and Abraham built an offering there, and laid his wood, laid the wood in order, and bound Isaac his son, and laid him on the altar upon the wood. And Abraham stretched forth his hand, and took the knife to slay his son. And the angel of the Lord called out, called unto him out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, here am I. And he said, lay not thine hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest God, seeing thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only son from me. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, behind him a ram in the thicket, a ram caught in a thicket by his horns. And Abraham took and went and took the, the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering instead, in the stead of his son. And Abraham called the name of the place Jehovah Jireh, as it is said to this day, in the mount of the Lord, it shall be seen. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for those who have come tonight, those who have been faithful to, to your house, Lord. And it, it seems like the same people were faithful to Sunday night uh, constantly, and we uh, would ask that you would encourage them for their faithfulness and that they would be rewarded for coming and, and, and seeking your face on Sunday evening. Lord, we ask that you would give us the words that we might teach, that we might preach, that we might learn more of you and might learn more of your son and learn more about ourselves as well. Forgive us of our sins that we might hear and that we might obey and forgive me that I might be a vessel that you would use to preach. We ask that if any were to hear this message that was lost, that they would see Jesus in the things that are done here, that they would trust him, that they would know that he is the acceptable sacrifice, the payment for our sins. Lord, help us today as we're gathered here that we would do your will and that we would uh, bring glory to your name, that we would be a blessing. 
All these things we ask in Jesus' precious name and for your glory. Amen. Amen. This is the final altar that we're going to look at in our series on the altars of Abraham. Uh, just a few weeks, we started out on, on, uh, uh, to preach on these things. And this is, uh, we would call it the altar of provision. The altar of provision. Uh, the name there, Jehovah Jireh, um, can be interpreted a couple of different ways. And the, 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 these, the, the interpretations do not disagree by any means. Uh, they just give broader meaning to what that means. Yeah, Jehovah Jireh says, in the mount of the Lord, it shall be seen. Also, we know Jehovah Jireh means that God will provide, and we will see God providing as he sees, as he uh, uh, sees the need, as he sees. And, and that, that's something for towards the end of the sermon. I don't want to get too much into that. Uh, right now, but um, we're not saying that there are two different meanings to this. We're saying that, that there is greater meaning that the Lord sees and the Lord provides is what we're trying to get across. Um, this altar, as we, we gathered, uh, uh, as we've, we've studied through, that we've uh, preached on three different altars in this study. And then we preached last Sunday morning on an arbor. Uh, a, a tree or a grove that Abraham planted as well. Now, we uh, uh, preached out of uh, Genesis chapter 12, um, the altar of promise. When God first sent Abraham out, and he said, I've got a place. I've promised you a place uh, that will be yours and will be an inheritance to your, 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 your people and you will, uh, your children. You will have a son. And uh, the, the, through, through that son, he will be a blessing to all the world. And we understand that the, the son was not only Isaac, but the son which was to come much later on, uh, Jesus Christ. Uh, the very next verse there, it, 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 there's a little time in between those verses. Or, and we find out that, that Abraham builds an altar. We call that the altar of prayer. <coughs> as Abraham was going out and seeking God's will and seeking God's direction. Too many times uh, prayer, uh, prayer is primarily just, Lord, give me this. Lord, uh, I need this. Lord, I need that. What we need most is direction. What we need most is to, to uh, uh, see what God would have us to do. Then in chapter 13, we read of the arbor or the altar of party. This was made after Abraham and Lot had separated. And there was, uh, there was division among them and there was uh, Lot and his men were never a part of God's plan. As he had told uh, Abram at the very beginning, he says, you know, depart from your family, depart from your kindred, depart from your home, depart from your land. Because I have something better for you. And when Abram and, and Lot finally separated because the division be the, between them had become great, God then went on to bless Abraham. So right away, 12 uh, has two altars. One, one verse after another. We get into the next chapter. Uh, he's built another altar. And then we go all the way to chapter 22 before we find another altar that Abraham has built. Now, as a preacher, you look for stuff like that. At least I do. Um, uh, I look for something to try to make a point and says, well, you know, is this showing that there was a great lax period in, in, in Abraham's prayer life? I don't believe so. I believe that this is just God's uh, as much as that would make a great point and a great sermon, I, I, I think that, that, that as we look through that, that there was no um, great division. There were times where Abraham failed, obviously, and Abraham did not uh, make uh, rash decisions and poor decisions. Uh, but at the same time, um, 
I, I believe that this is just the first time that, or the next time in God's word that he chose to mention an altar and mention an altar by name. Uh, in chapter 21, we had looked at where he didn't build an altar, but he built up uh, uh, this grove and he called upon the name of the Lord. So I don't think there was any uh, uh, backsliding as much as uh, we would like to uh, be able to come up with something, to come up with a great sermon. But I, I just believe that this is all that God's word um, wanted us to know about or, or felt we needed to know about. So he builds this altar. Now the, the, the first three altars and even the grove that he built or he planted, I guess would be a better word concerning the grove. These were all done on Abraham's, I don't want to say a whim, but, but Abraham had decided to do this. You know, he was praising God for the promises that he made when he built that first altar. He was seeking God's face when he built the altar of prayer. He was re-establishing the, the covenant that he made with God, with the, article, the, the altar of parting. <coughs> but we read here that it was God himself that commanded Abraham to do this thing that we find in chapter 22, to go out and um, build this altar. Now, he didn't say build an altar, he said sacrifice your son, but obviously the, the intent was he would have to build an altar in order to sacrifice his son. So it was God that commanded that. God, after uh, Abraham had, had uh, gone through all these things, God commanded him to go out and to sacrifice his own son. Now, we talked this morning about how I had preached in the past and called this his only son, and said, well, you know, we know that it wasn't his only son because he had a son in Ishmael. But Ishmael had been pushed off. Ishmael had been put away. This was the son that God had promised. We'll read later on. You know, we make such a big deal about Abraham having a, a son at the age of 100. After the death of Sarah, he marries another woman. And they have, I believe it was three sons. Uh... So that is often overlooked, maybe because of the importance of Isaac and maybe because, okay, God did it when he was 100, no big deal. He can do it later on. Sometimes we overlook God's goodness because we get used to it. We overlook God's power because we get used to it. Uh, but just as uh, amazing that even after Isaac, he went on to father more children. But God commanded Abraham to go out and sacrifice his son. Let us look at, oh boy, 13 minutes have passed and I'm about to get to my first point. You excited? I can tell. One of you is excited. Okay. Let's look at the tempting of Abraham. The tempting of Abraham. Now, we know the New Testament says that God doesn't tempt us. God does not tempt people. When, in, in the sense of the tempting that we have here, it is a test that God gave uh, to Abraham. A test is given what? To see what you know, to determine what you know, and to let you know what you know. One of my teachers back when I was in Bible college uh, made a, a statement uh, one time, he said, you'll notice that Jesus, when he gave a test, most time we give a test after we've cut it, covered some uh, information. You know, when we have Bible school, we'll, we'll teach on a, we'll teach a lesson, and then a lot of times afterwards, we will, we will ask questions and give out prizes to see who's, who is paying attention and who learned something and what was learned from that. Uh, Jesus would give the test before he taught the lesson. Before he told a parable, he would ask the question. That was to reveal to the disciples, you all don't know everything. 
But here, God tests Abraham that Abraham would see what he knew. But the time of the tempting is also important. It says, and it came to pass after these things. God did tempt Abraham. Abraham had been through a lot, had he not, since uh, Genesis chapter 12. Uh, we know 10 chapters have, have elapsed in our Bible. But there was a, a, a great period of time from the time that God said, you know, go and, and get out of Ur and, and, and go and I will show you the land that I'm going to give you. There was time that had elapsed and things had happened during this time. There are things that... that might happen to us today that we couldn't have handled in our day when we were weaker in the faith. God is using time to build our faith. God is using situations to build our faith. God is, is, is doing things to mold us and to make us and to make us more like Christ. Time it had lapsed. Abraham had matured. He had went from the name Abram to the name Abraham. We can think of some of the things that have happened. There was the trip to Egypt. Remember, we there was famine in the land, and, and uh, Abraham decided, "Well, I'm going to go into the uh, into Egypt." And he passed uh, uh, Sarah off, who was his half sister. Passed her off as his sister, uh, that none would take her and kill him. And uh, didn't work out. There was the tryst with Hagar where, where, where uh, Sarah began to doubt God's word. And in doubting God's word, she passed her doubt on to Abraham. Be careful who you listen to. Be careful whose counsel you have. And she persuaded him to go in with her, her maid, Hagar, and to have a son because she said, there's no way we can have a child. And that very woman and that very son, Abraham, had to eventually put out. In that time, we also remember the tithing to Melchizedek, a perfect, a great example. And I believe Melchizedek was the Lord himself. And that's another sermon for another time. That has, Lot had went and pitched his tent towards Sodom. He was... Uh, uh, there was a, a war of the kings and Lot and his men and, and uh, the, the possessions they had were taken captive. And Abraham and his men went in and recaptured Lot and brought him back and freed him. And afterwards he met with Melchizedek, the king of Salem. There was the total annihilation of Sodom and Gomorrah. Here we see Abram as a picture of Christ, Abraham is a picture of Christ because he was pleading for the righteous people that were in Sodom and Gomorrah. He said, surely you won't destroy these cities if there are 50 righteous people there. And the Lord said, no, I won't. And he said, okay, well, how about 40? How about it? And he kept going on till we found out there were not even 10 righteous people found in Sodom and Gomorrah. And the Lord went in. Sent his angels in. The Lord sent his angels in and they had to hasten Lot out of Sodom. Two things we learned there was, number one, God said, I can't destroy the city while you're here. For those that think that we're going to uh, endure the tribulation, they need to look at that story. God removed the righteous up from among the wicked before destruction came. But he had to hasten them. It is a shame that the righteous need to be hastened to obey the word of God as well. We read of the treaties made with Abimelech. All these things had come to mature Abraham. And he said, okay, you're ready for the test. Now go out and sacrifice Isaac. We 
We see the time that had left. We see the time had come. You remember when Jesus came onto the scene and said it was in the fullness of time. In the fullness of time, Christ came and, and, and throughout his life, we see that they had wanted to take him and they had wanted to slay him prior to when they took him, but the time was not right. The time had not come. The time had come now where things were ready. And he said, go out and sacrifice your son. We see the tempting of Abraham. We see the trip together. This is what, was a trip made by the father and the son. Now there's a lot of speculation, and, and I'll be honest with you, I don't know. How much did Isaac realize? How much did Isaac know? How willing was Isaac? The Bible really doesn't get into that, but we know about Jesus. Jesus knew the whole story. Jesus knew why he came. Jesus willingly and was obedient unto the death of the cross. But there was the father and the son. And twice in our passage, it says that they went up together. The father and the son, agreement, going in the same direction, going for the same cause. God the father and God the son were in agreement. What about those two young men? God had told Abraham to go up and take your son. He didn't say anything about the young men. But Abraham brought the young men. But when they got to a certain place, he said, you all stay here. Verse 5. Abide ye here with the ass. And I and the, the lad will go yonder and worship and come again to you. Abraham and Isaac had to go alone. They had to go alone. Now, what if he brought the young men? There are two possible things that could have happened. They could have either helped Abraham in binding Isaac, or they could have tried to aid Isaac and tried to keep this thing from happening. But we understand that they went together. The young men were left behind. God the Father and God the Son went to Calvary together. We think of the physical pain. We think of the damage caused by the death on the cross. But if you read the scripture, it was the Father that met out his vengeance upon the Son. It was the Father that had laid the iniquities of us upon him. It was the father that actually chastised him and punished him for my sins. Isaac bore the wood. It is a picture. It is a picture of Christ carrying the cross. He said, it says Abraham took the wood from the burnt offering and laid it upon Isaac, his son. What a picture of Christ. Carrying the cross to Calvary. Abraham or Isaac bore the wood, but Abraham brought the fire. God brought the fire down upon Jesus, his only begotten son. His son, which he said, in whom I'm well pleased. The beloved of the father. But he laid him upon the altar. He laid him upon the cross. He, he, he brought the fire of his vengeance upon him that we might be forgiven, Amen. that our debt might be paid for. And then we see the promised return. He said, I am the lad will go yonder and worship 
And after it's all done, we'll come again to you. Now, some might read this and say, well, Abraham was just lying to those guys. He said that in the presence of Isaac. He didn't, want, he didn't want Isaac to know what he was about to do. But if you read Hebrews chapter 11, we understand Abraham himself believed that. He understood that if he sacrificed Isaac, God would raise him up. Oh, what a picture of Christ. Oh, what a picture of Christ. I was looking at some of the comparisons of some of the other translations of the Bible. And I don't remember what translation it was where it says God will provide himself a lamb. One version said God will provide himself a victim. How far from that is that from the word of God? So let's look now at the teaching for us. God will provide himself a lamb. Many bring the fire in the wood when they come to worship God. They bring the, all the materials necessary. They bring the wood they bring the fire as they try to, to, to build up enthusiasm. In modern so-called worship services, now they, 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 they try to bring the fire, don't they? They try to get everybody excited like it was a pep rally. They bring the fire, they bring the wood, but where's the lamb? Where's the lamb for the sacrifice? There is no redemption without the blood of the Lamb. There is no relationship between man and God without the sacrifice. We can bring all the wood we want. We can bring all the fire we want. But until God provides the Lamb, It's all useless. It's all just noise. So Isaac is bound. Abraham lays him upon the wood. The fire is there nearby. He takes the knife that they also brought and he raises it to strike Isaac. And the angel of the Lord called him. He said, Abraham, Abraham, stopped him. Lay not thine hand upon thy son. It was never God's will for Isaac to be sacrificed in such a manner. In the book of Micah, the question is, how can I come before the Lord? Should, can I, if I offered my firstborn, could I come to him? And the answer is no. There is nothing that we have that we can give that is acceptable. The sacrifice of Isaac would have meant no more than Cain's sacrifice. God did not want it. It was not the sacrifice that God chose. God had a sacrifice in mind. His only begotten son. All these other sacrifices can do, uh, do is, is for man can boast about what he's given to God. 
If Abraham sacrificed Isaac, he could have went around and bragged about, yes, I held nothing back. Even my son did I give to God. God doesn't want anything that we have. God gives us what we need. He gave us Jesus. He gave us the faith that we have to believe in Jesus. Even that is not our own. Jehovah Jireh, God our provider, provides us with everything that we need in order to be redeemed. The places, Jehovah Jireh, God has seen, God will provide. The place called Moriah. Moriah means the Lord will see. Nothing is hidden from God. The Lord sees our need. Our need for salvation, our daily needs as well. The Lord sees our need. He saw the need. He gave us a picture that we might see Christ. Now, we said that Isaac was, it was a picture and a, and, and a pretty good picture of Christ, what he did, but the ram was even a better picture because it was the ram died in Isaac's stead. The ram was caught in the thicket. We talked about that when we talked about the cross, about the curse of one hanging upon a tree. The ram was caught by its horns, a picture of strength. God sees our need. He sees that he saw that we needed a savior. Now he didn't see that when Adam and Eve sinned. He saw that before time began. He sees our need. He sees what is needed. We needed a Savior. He provided one. He sees that our need is met. The angel of the Lord said to Abraham, Lay not thine hand upon the lad, neither do anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest God, seeing that thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, from me. <coughs> we talk so much about faith. We use Abraham as an example of faith so many times. He's included in the hall of faith in Hebrews chapter 11. By faith, God said, go, and he went. By faith, God said, offer your son. And he believed if he offered his son, God would still restore him. But the scripture says that, that, that after this was done, after Abraham had, had went through to the point where he was ready, he had the knife above the young man, ready to strike. He says, now I know that thou fearest God. The point I'm trying to make here is faith is not just believing. Faith is doing. Good intentions are great as long as you follow through. Jesus didn't just have the intention of dying for our sins. He actually did. There at Gethsemane, God could have said, well, I can see that you would do it, so we're good. You don't have to do it. 
He still had to do it. Some years ago, and I don't know how when all this started, and it may have been a, a part of uh, some theology for for since the early days. I know it's become prominent in the last few decades. This philosophy of easy believism. They oh, just believe in Jesus, and you'll be saved. But faith requires action. We don't have time to get into it tonight, but in the book of Romans chapter 4, it says, Abraham believed God and was accounted unto him for righteousness. And Paul talks about Abraham being justified by faith. And then James in chapter 2 of his epistle, let's just look at that really quickly. James chapter 2. He speaks on the same subject. Verse 21. Now you're familiar with this, but when where James is talking about faith without works is dead. Um, verse 20 says, O vain man, that faith without works is dead. Was not Abraham uh, our father justified by works? Now, didn't Paul say in the book of Romans he was justified by faith? And, and, and James is saying, no, he was justified by works. Are they disagreeing? Well, let's look into it a little more. When he offered Isaac his son upon the altar, seest thou how faith wrought with his works? By works was faith made perfect. And there's a question mark. In the scripture, and he's quoting the same thing that Paul did. The scripture was fulfilled which said Abraham believed God and it was imputed unto him for righteousness and he was called the friend of God. The important thing that, that James is pointing out is yes, Abraham had faith but the faith motivated him to act upon it. This is called Faith Missionary Baptist Church. Faith is not just believing. Faith is obeying. The work of the church is to do the work of God. We're called the body of Christ for a reason. It shouldn't be just a name. Faith without works is dead. We see the faith of Christ. The faith of Christ was that God would forgive our sins. The faith of Christ was that if he went through this ordeal, that he would be lifted up, he would be glorified. And he faced the shame of the cross. He despised that shame, but he was willing to endure it for the glory that awaited him. And the people that would belong to him. The faith of Christ was demonstrated by the work of Christ. The altar of provision, God has provided everything we need. But we need to act upon what God has provided. Would you stand?